This week, today's homeowner is going outside to look into what makes a great outdoor living space. We'll look at the homes of some people you know and some you don't to set you up with great ideas for your own outdoor room. When the weather cooperates, having an outdoor space you can call your own is a great part of being a homeowner. Now, it can be very simple or very elaborate. These homeowners really have a great setup. They have this nice open deck area here. Then they have this covered area with the grill for all the cooking chores. That's important when you're planning your outdoor space. And they have this awesome screen room. Boy, this would be perfect when the bugs get a little bad outside to retreat into this area for a nice, comfortable seating area. And if it's a little cold, hey, they got a fireplace, how perfect. Hey, this week we want to talk with a number of different people that have some very special outdoor spaces and find out what really makes an outdoor room. Recently I was on the West Coast and got a chance to visit with Louis Van Amstel from Dancing with the Stars. He has a condo just off the Sunset Strip in LA and he showed me around his outdoor room, a rooftop area that he's converted into his own private getaway. Now you're, you're pretty busy here with uh, all your involvement with uh, Dancing with the Stars and then So You Think You Can Dance. How do you have any time at all to use this wonderful place? There is not a lot of time, but right. I must say I still use it quite often because you can lay here in the sun uh -huh. or you can just read a book or enjoy the time with my dogs. Or even behind there I have the barbecue, you yeah, know, just yeah. go up, take some uh, steaks and just eat up here. Just That's great. I, I guess I expected a smaller spot, but and you got a lot of space up here. You can you can uh, get quite a party going up here. I know. For my birthday, I had a party here with 50 people, <laughs> and it still was only halfway filled. Yeah. It was crazy. And it's as big as the entire condo. And, and the dogs, you mentioned the dogs. I know they love it up here to be able yeah. to get out. You got, what, three dogs? Three dogs. Uh -huh. And sometimes, you know, you're so busy, and I can't be with them for six hours. Instead of having them in, in the house, uh -huh. I actually just have them here. They love it here because they can play, they have the toys here and there, mm -hmm. so they can play. Now all the plants, you got a, a lot of watering on that because of, of it being so dry here all the time. We're not allowed water up here, mm -hmm. uh, so every day, four buckets of water, I got to bring it up and by hand, give them, uh, give those plants their love. Mm -hmm. But you know what, it's a good workout and it keeps you sane sure. and it keeps you working, so <laughs> it's okay. Was any of this already set up like this? I got the key and this was, there was nothing. There oh, was okay. nothing, so I designed it myself and you know, and you tweak here and there, sure. and you add plants and flowers, and some plants don't work, and others do a great job, and others hate me. <laughs> so, and other plants love me, so, yeah. But, but what about getting it up here? I mean, somebody had, oh, to, somebody had to help you out on all of that, There's and a getting comedy it up show. the elevator, and... There's a comedy show. That, that banana plant was way bigger. Yeah. To get that in the elevator, it was quite a trip, yes. <laughs> Yeah, we, we laughed and we cried at the same time. <laughs> but most things I bought smaller, so they grew over the past two years. I so, see. And hopefully soon this one will actually grow all the way over this pergola. Well, well that so. works great. I mean, if you you know keep them watered and uh, maybe maybe spruce them up a little bit with a miracle grow, that kind of a supplement and everything, yeah, it helps well, a lot. But. I'm so glad my mom comes on Thursday so she can take care of that. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Well, great. Well, I can see you got a, a, a great situation here and a great opportunity for a lot of parties and maybe a few yeah. wrap-up parties after some of the uh, some of the shows you're doing. Oh yeah. Well, we'll uh, we're starting Dancing with the Stars very soon, so after each evening we gotta you know blow some steam off sure. so we'll just have a barbecue or just get together and have some fun of course southern california is known for its great weather so i'm sure louis gets a lot of use out of his rooftop outdoor space but we're not all that fortunate and occasionally you're going to need a little shelter to protect you from the elements and the screen porch we just looked at here is perfect for that but what if you could combine your indoor spaces with your outdoor spaces well this is a door unit that we found at a trade show a few years ago it was at the geldwin windows and doors booth and it's perfect for a situation like this all you have to do in order to combine this wonderful den with this wonderful deck is to unlatch a couple latches it folds, a few more latches, and 
it folds even more and completely erases that fine line between indoors and outdoors. Just think about an entertaining situation here where you're having a party or a family gathering and you're able to utilize all of this space. The versatility of this unit is perfect for a situation like this. Now, if you're concerned about any of the security here, of course, all of the latches go down into the threshold and up into the header. You also have this three-point locking system that ensures that you won't have any problem with someone trying to get in this door. Great solution. Hey, how about another solution from Joe on this week's Simple Solution for Your Home? I love finding alternative uses for everyday products, and today we're talking about dryer sheets, which not only contain fabric softener, but they also help eliminate static electricity. And because of that, they're great for cleaning dusty surfaces throughout the house, starting with Venetian blinds. Cleaning a blind this size is just a, a terrible job, and you don't want to do it very often. So with a dryer sheet, not only are you wiping off the dust, but it also is killing the static electricity that's attracting the dust. So if you use a dryer sheet to clean these, you'll need to clean much less often. It's usually best to start at the top and work your way down. Now, besides Venetian blinds, these dryer sheets are also great for cleaning computer screens and TV screens. And again, for the same reason, as soon as you turn on the TV, that burst of electricity attracts dust and it sticks. So you can use a dryer sheet just to clean it off. And this will not only, again, remove the dust, but it'll make, kill the static electricity so it won't get dusty as often. Now these are just two uses for dryer sheets, but you really can use them to clean any flat, dusty surface anywhere in the house. This week we're looking at a variety of different outdoor spaces. You know those spaces around your house that you try to spend as much time as you possibly can? Now that might be a nice deck like this, or a screen porch, or a bench in a shady spot of the yard, but with so many options, how do you get the right ideas for your backyard? Well, you could go door to door and check out your neighbor's backyard, or you could do what we've done and send Alan out on a fact-finding mission to a massive home and garden show. Welcome to the Festival of Flowers. This is the largest outdoor flower show in the entire Southeast, and it happens every year right here in my hometown of Mobile, Alabama over 300,000 square feet of exhibits are here. But whether you travel to Mobile or go to a show in your part of the country, this is a great place to pick up some great ideas for your outdoor living space, whether it's decor for your outdoor furniture or maybe a unique display of driftwood. Reflecting the surrounding environment is an important part of developing any outdoor space, and the builder of these birdhouses has a unique perspective on that. I'm a seventh generation commercial fisherman and since I could walk I was on the beaches with my father pulling sand so I've been around this wood all my life and it's, it's just absolutely gorgeous stuff and I started playing with it and building bird houses and uh, it kind of blossomed into this. My goal is to make them look as natural as possible like they grew that way but of course I want the birds to come to them but and it's very important that it's all recycled too. An important goal for many homeowners is creating a tranquil spot to relax, and few things do that as well as a water feature. A lot of our customers come back and get one for the front yard or the backyard, even done some in some master bathrooms. One of the exhibit designers here is also showing a water feature with a different twist, but he believes that every outdoor space is a very individual creation. The, uh, everybody's different, and it's, it's really about what you want. And uh, I think design is the most important thing. I see so many people go and just start buying plants and putting them in. And uh, remember, right plant, right place. You, you know, we look at maximum height and maximum width on plants. And you know, if, if a tree gets 100 feet tall, let's don't plant that underneath the power line. You know, if your sago palm gets 10 feet wide, let's don't put that by the front door. Right plant, right place. But since they don't have actual clients for these displays, where do these designers get the inspiration for their exhibits? Uh, here we had a little help in the fact that this is a, a garden event and we were actually asked to pick a country or region to landscape. Some homeowners are fond of one particular area other, over another uh, and many folks just want an area to relax to kind of escape their everyday world if you will. Uh, in Japanese in this case uh, it, it's just a very soothing garden. A lot of color, a lot of relaxation. So many great ideas, from adding color with seasonal plants and flowers to creating an entertainment space with pavers, or, or hey, maybe add a water feature for a conversation piece. The ideas that you can get from a show like this will be springing up in your mind like, 
will like flowers. Recently on the show, Danny and Alan were mixing up and pouring concrete in one of these wheelbarrows, and they were having so much fun that I wanted to highlight it on Best New Products. Take a look at this model. This is the newer model by True Temper, and it's called the Easy Pour, and you can kind of tell why, because look at this spout here on the end. You know, when you are mixing up concrete or you've got soil in here and you've got to get it in a specific spot, this pour spout is absolutely ingenious. It holds about six cubic feet of material. This poly base won't rust. And take a look at the construction down here. First of all, the tire is a flat free tire, meaning that you can't pop it with nails. So that's perfect if you need to take it on a construction site. And I love the heavy duty construction. It won't collapse over time and the handles are made out of steel. So this means they're not gonna rot and they're also not gonna break. I tell you what, I love this wheelbarrow. It's perfect for if you've gotta do a specific area job where you need to get that material right in the right place every time. I love it. This week we're looking at what makes a great outdoor room. We've gotten tips from pros and seen some great examples so far, but one of my most interesting discussions was with TV science expert Bill Nye about his newly added front porch. Well, Bill, I know you just finished up this porch, did some of the work yourself, and hired a lot of it done, but it looks great. A lot oh, of details. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you, in this neighborhood, all the many of the houses have porches like this. Mm -hmm. This one didn't. So uh, I put had this put on, and it greatly increases your usable space. It's mm -hmm. like, as we say, the nicest room outside of the house. Right, right. And uh, so the lumber is all Forest Stewardship Council uh, certified, and the cement was low emission but still high strength. It's sort of an, a compromise. And the brick is all salvage brick. The detail, though, that you put in this thing, oh, though, man. with the, the, the ceiling, I love that, the contrast between the natural wood and then the white. And, uh, and what you did on the on the Dutch door there, I mean, how, how did that come about? That's a great idea. Well, you know, I, I'm of a certain age where I watched Mr. <laughs> I watched Mr. Ed. The premise, or rather the set that made it all work so well was Wilbur, our human hero, protagonist, would talk to the horse over a Dutch door. Right. And I spent a lot of time yelling at, there's two ways to know you're old. Uh-huh. Uh, the first one is, you watch Meet the Press. Then the other way to know you're old is to yell at cars and tell them to slow down. <laughs> so, uh, well, there's a lot of old people out there then. Yeah, well, so car, we have a lot of kids and dogs, but there's a shortcut from one arterial to another if you cut through this neighborhood. So, slow down! <laughs> so you can yell over the Dutch door. Right. Well, it's, it's pretty cool how you tied all the stucco back in, too, because I know that is not an easy job at well, all. Those guys were very skilled. That's, yeah. what, that's what I'd describe it. The guys who did that were just really, really very good. And there's a, a story about the underside of the roof here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So things go wrong when you're contracting and doing things. In, uh, the guy says, do you want it painted or stained? These are our two... Uh, these are the two choices. Right. Uh, and I said, stain. And here, you just wait right there, and you uh -huh. can speed this part up. Sure. So I wanted it from the inside to be visually connected. Uh huh. And um, you know, there's an expression, three woods. Right. You know, you probably are uh -huh. experts on this. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I uh, I went to a job which I have from time to time. And, <laughs> and I came back and the underside of this was very dark, just about this color. Oh, I see. And I went, uh, you know, stuff goes wrong. Right. You know, it's whisking under the bridge. Not what you had in mind. No, and they tried bleaching it and they sample painted one another. I went, well, oh well. Well, anyway, the guy felt bad, I guess. And they, they put a false bottom. This, if you look closely, it's another layer oh, okay. of thin tongue and groove. It, it just looks so much better. It's yeah. very cool of him, I must say. He yeah. didn't charge me for it. He says he didn't charge me for it. It's <laughs> in the invoice someplace. Well, it all, it all tied together great. And I can imagine how many days you're going to be spinning out here. Oh, man. Watching the world here. go oh, by. Oh, you do. You see, every morning, the kids all go to school. Just about dead on, quarter to eight. The kids and parents, bye, Bill. I, uh, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> Bill had the front porch added to his house, but if you have an existing front porch like this one and you want to create that outdoor room feel, well, you need something more than just the bland concrete. Now, I will say this, I love the brick border. It's a great accent, really sets the porch apart. But for this massive concrete surface, 
we want to add a little bit of color. Now you can do that with concrete stains and with concrete paints. Very easy to apply and they look good. But the homeowners here wanted something with a little extra punch. So here's what we've decided to do. We're going to cut a series of grooves into the concrete to create a very distinct pattern. We're going to add color with an acid stain topped with a beautiful finish. And by the time we're done, the outside is going to be just as inviting as the inside. The first step is laying out the scoring pattern with the homeowner, Scott. We have to create a border around the perimeter because we can only get the saw so close to the wall. Within the border, diagonal lines will mimic the look of large tiles. We're using an ordinary circular saw fitted with a diamond-tipped masonry blade to make the cuts, but we're only cutting about a quarter of an inch deep. A straight edge is a must because the cutting is slow and the lines are long. It's also dusty, so safety glasses and dust masks are important too. A quick rinse clears off the dust without stirring it up further before we wash the slab to remove any dirt, oil, or anything else that would prevent the stain from penetrating the slab. We're using a pump-up garden sprayer to apply the stain, which actually is an acid. Before it's applied, the slab is dampened slightly and everything else is covered up. As the acid reacts with the minerals in the concrete, it's going to change color. The intensity will vary depending on the slab's mineral content from one area to the next. A mixture of water and baking soda is going to be applied the next day to neutralize the acid and the residue is vacuumed away. Finally, a clear sealer is applied to protect the concrete and maintain its wet, glossy look. The finished floor now complements the look of the porch instead of taking away from it, making it the nicest room outside the house. I rarely leave my home without my sunglasses for good reasons. Doctors say sunglasses with UV lens helps protect our eyes from developing cataracts. Well, here's a green twist. You should think about sunglasses for your home. What I'm talking about is solar shade cloth. Strategically placed solar shade cloth can screen out solar energy, which reduces heat gain and helps to lower your home cooling expenses. Now, good quality solar cloth can filter out up to 90% of harmful UV rays. The benefit isn't limited to the inside either. Under cover of this cloth, outside ambient temperatures can be 15 degrees cooler. One other green benefit is that once they're in place, they're helping to keep your home nice and cool without using any extra energy or spending any more money. This week we've looked at some great outdoor living spaces. Porches, patios, decks, whatever we call them, they're the places where we get away from the everyday rat race and enjoy the great outdoors without leaving home. The key is creating a space that fits your lifestyle and lets you relax and unwind when the time and the weather allow. I hope we've been able to share with you something that you can use to create the perfect outdoor room at your house. Now, you don't have to be a big celebrity like some of the guys we spoke with or have a giant budget or a massive space to work with. You just need a little imagination, maybe a little time and a little elbow grease. Hey, thanks a lot for being with us. I'm Danny Lifford. We'll see you next week on today's homeowner.